You thought I couldn't see it, but it's clear as day. Analytics show no doubt. You really want a dedicated secure boot video. Secure Boot or UEFI Secure Boot is a verification mechanism for ensuring that code launched by a computer UEFI firmware is trusted. By using public key cryptography, it is possible to sign boot binaries and then check that signature on runtime before it's executed. In order to do that, your motherboard is preloaded with a set of cryptographic keys, certificates, and hashes, which are most often categorized as platform key, the topmost master key controlling access to other keys. Typically, only one platform key can be present. Key exchange key are responsible for accessing signature database and signing binaries. Signature database is the biggest bag of all, which can contain keys, signatures, and hashes. Entries from this database are used to decide whether an EFI binary can be run or not. Forbidden signature database is the same as the above, but it's used as a revocation list. If you find this terminology confusing and weird, don't worry, I do too. Typically, your motherboard's firmware comes preloaded with so-called Microsoft keys, which are also actually certificates and hashes. This means your firmware by default trusts to run binaries signed by Microsoft. But wait, doesn't that mean that Microsoft has monopolized the computer market with this one simple trick? Not really. Quoting the Debian wiki, Microsoft acts as a certification authority for the secure boot and they will sign programs on behalf of other trusted organizations so that their programs will also run. There are certain identification requirements that organizations have to meet here and code has to be audited for safety, but these are not too difficult to achieve. It is a discussion topic, but to be honest, I'm not sure there's a better solution that wouldn't result in some sort of platform wars. You can also enroll your own keys alongside existing ones or get rid of Microsoft's entirely. But that means you won't be able to run Windows and some motherboards rely on the Microsoft keys for their own firmware or proprietary drivers, which means you can effectively break your machine and break the chain of trust. UEFI isn't obviously checking each and every single piece of code that runs in your system. It only checks the very initial parts of the boot process, but after that, control and trust management is handed over to the OS. Not all code in your computer is signed, obviously, so at some point OS allows unsigned code to run. We trust that the vulnerable parts of the OS, like drivers, bootloader and maybe something else, are properly signed and verified, while the rest not necessarily. For example, any bootloader tampering breaks its signature check and that breaks the chain of trust, preventing further execution. Fun fact, you can use secure boot with an extended chain of trust verification as a form of DRM. If you require signed code at every step of the way, you effectively control every piece of software that can run on your platform. Some console hacks rely on finding the weak spots where you can inject untrusted code without triggering a signature check. If you are only running Windows, you most likely either already have Secure Boot enabled or just need to flip the switch in the BIOS. What I really want to do is to show you how to configure and enroll your own keys and enable Secure Boot on a desktop PC running Linux. I will use my Arch Linux deployment. You could see me install and configure it in my previous video. It has the necessary GPT partition table, EFI partition, but also utilizes systemd boot and unified kernel image. I have a MSI X670E motherboard, so my BIOS screen and menus can be different from what you can see on your own platform. But most importantly, different platforms can have their own quirks. Even mine has two, which I will tell you about in a bit. But like I said before, deleting keys willy-nilly can brick your machine. Always do extensive research before you attempt anything. You have been warned. Now, let's start by installing a helper program called SBCTL. Calling SBCTL status shows you your current situation. In my case, secure boot is disabled. SBCTL is not deployed. I don't know why they word it as installed. Setup mode is not enabled. Deployed keys are default ones. And most importantly, 
SBCTL has identified my platform to have some known issues when it comes to secure boot. Look out for similar warnings on your own machine and read carefully if it points you to an article. I will tell you what this warning is in my case in a second. For now, you can create your own keys by calling SBCTL create keys. At this point, SBCTL automatically integrates with MKInit CPIO and signs your unified kernel image. But it does not sign your systemd boot EFI stops. So even though SBCTL status now says that it is installed, it really isn't. Let's create a Pacman hook that will trigger upon modification of the systemd boot EFI stop image. The base stop image is being stored in the target directory you can see on screen. And since here paths are relative to the package files, we are not using slash at the beginning of the path. The hook saves signed files in the same directory and adds dot signed to the name. We are naming them like that because systemd boot recognizes and uses dot signed files. After that, we can trigger the hook by reinstalling systemd package. This will again rebuild and sign our unified kernel image, but most importantly it will create signed EFI stops. Sadly, systemd boot won't update our current EFI images with new signed ones, because technically they're the same images, so we need to force it by calling bootctl install. All that work and we haven't even enrolled our keys. So let's finally reboot into BIOS. Navigate to security menu and look for secure boot. For now, it needs to be disabled. Now, here is where the first quirk of my motherboard comes into play. By selecting hardware OS compatibility secure boot preset, the secure boot effectively allows unsigned binaries to run which defeats the whole purpose. Really, I don't know what genius came up with this thing, but it's terrible. It can bamboozle some people into thinking that they are protected by secure boot, when actually they're not. Anyway, in my case, I'm navigating to the key management menu and here's where the second quirk comes into play. On my platform, which I'll say once again, is MSI X670E, this menu is completely broken. Choosing the delete all secure boot variables does not enable setup mode, even though it tells you it should. You need to manually delete every key, starting from the bottom and deleting platform key at the very end in order to delete all variables and enable setup mode. But wait, there's more. Did I mention that on my motherboard this menu randomly freezes and requires a full power cycle if you stay in it for too long? It literally took me an hour to properly discover what the delete sequence is here. I'm running the latest stable firmware for my motherboard and this has been broken for quite some time. What I want to say though, you might need to do some R&D on your platform to find out how to enter secure boot setup mode. In my case the whole experience was terrible, especially whenever I tried to record all of this stuff. So. After you succeed and reboot, the SBCTL status should now say that you're in the setup mode. Only now you can enroll keys, which is done by calling SBCTL enroll keys. You can see SBCTL warning me about not enrolling Microsoft keys, which in this case is totally valid. Not only my firmware may require it, I'm also dual booting this PC with Windows, so I'm adding Microsoft option to enroll the whole package. Reboot and enter BIOS again. This time you only need to enable the secure boot. If you have done everything correctly, your Arch Linux should boot properly without any issues, as well as your Windows, if you have one. Finally, you can verify with SBCTL status that everything has green check marks and works fine. 
If you really want to ensure that no one will simply enter BIOS when you are away and disable the secure boot, you should consider placing a password on your BIOS menu. If you have any questions, leave a comment, subscribe and enable notifications to catch me streaming and talk with me live on chat. Join the Discord, hype the video, that's all I'm asking. Thanks for now. Bye!